What's up, guys? I'm Eric. That is Phil. I'm Phil. Uh, we've got Bardstown and Green River in the house. We've got Karen. Yep, Karen and we, Wells. And we've got Jazz. Karen is with Green River. Uh, Jazz is with Bardstown. National brand reps, by the way. National. Um, we do have a, a little bit of, of house business to handle first. Uh, Jeff, by the time you see this, it's too late, buddy. Um, <laughs> two hours. You've got two hours left as of right now, which means when you see this tomorrow, you'll have part of your bottle missing. So, thanks. All right. <laughs> Back to business. So... What uh? What first of all? What what what's got y'all in New Orleans? So we're here for Tales of the Cocktail. Um, this is our second year coming yeah. down together as a team, and it has been so much fun. We've had the opportunity to take over the Fountain Bar and the Ritz Hotel. Uh, we just literally moments before we arrived here got done with our joint activation at the Will and the Way. Um, had DJ Hundred Proof spinning. Um snacks from will in the way and and local cocktails so it's good yeah. stuff it's been a fun time yeah a hot day i was gonna ask you how, <laughs> how's the uh how's the heat treat a hot, hot day since seen <laughs> given the shorts I'm sure, I'm sure it gets warm in bardstown but uh not this yeah <laughs> still not in the full hot season yet. oh no yeah, yeah. You got another couple of weeks for that the, the heat isn't as bad as the humidity yeah, yeah. yeah. just a little thick a little thick um what do we uh what'd you pour for us jazz so uh I poured one of my favorite things that we make out of our origin series. It's our weeded, bottled, and bond. Okay. Uh, six years old, 100 proof, 68% uh, corn, 20% wheat, 12% malted barley. Nice. An approachable price. Where does uh, where does the uh, the origin name come from? Do you know? Essentially, these are our mainstay everyday bottles. When you think about who Bardstown is, we want you to associate these bottles with us okay yeah. this is kind of like your 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 flagship bottle right your yeah absolutely i mean this is all for only bardstown for bardstown not yeah it's state distilled 100 percent ours um they came out in january of last year because the one thing you can't cheat at when it comes to whiskey is the barrel aging so we didn't start distilling until 2016 uh, but this is actually the first recipe that ever ran on our stills um uh, is, is the the weeded the most popular of the of the origin series i think that this is the one i see disappear from the shelves yeah the that's a great question i think that it it's very popular but also each of the bottles is so unique uh amongst similar bottles like our our origin weeded is 100 proof you don't really find a lot of high proof weeded uh our kentucky straight bourbon 36% rye, so it's the highest rye bourbon on the market right now. And our 95.5 rye gets finished in infrared toasted cherry oak barrels, and we're the only ones in the industry who get to use those. So I feel like, depending on what you're into, like all of them are great bottles for different reasons. I know... You I'm ready to take a sip, man. Well, oh, yeah, let's, let's get in there. Let's, 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 let's do this. Yeah. Let's, uh, thank Cheers. you guys for coming all the way. Oh, and, my uh, gosh. Joining us on our cool little <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Phil. It's his short arms over there. <laughs> um, you know, I, I recently I know Bardstown acquired Green River. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I know is that Green River is older than Bardstown. Yeah, they have a pretty long history. Technically, like, yeah. A we pretty actually, recent revival. Yes, yeah. Uh, old distillery from 1885. Um, we're on the original grounds where Green River once was, awesome. um, but the whole brand kind of went dormant. So we actually started distilling a month before our Bardstown sister distillery did. Mm. We started distilling in 2016 in August, and uh, we started in September at, at our BBC so, campus. So how did the, the kind of the marriage between the two companies great, happen? Yeah, great question. So we launched Green River in February of 2022 with our flagship, which is our 70 corn, 21 rye, <laughs> nine malt. And then uh, that was February of 2022. And then in July of 2022, uh, Bardstown came knocking and they said, hey, we like what you're doing. You're making a lot of great uh, bourbon, a lot of great whiskey. Um, we're gonna buy you. And <laughs> that's when they, uh, they they realized that we were an old brand. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a, a 
been a marriage. It's been a perfect marriage. You've got old school and then you've got new and we just melded together and it's been a, a really fun ride. Awesome. Uh, I'm glad you could join us because uh, I, 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 I shot Jazz a message a while back like, hey, I, you know, I'm all, I always mess her. I met her at a, at a tasting, what, last year sometime maybe? Yeah, Late at a Rouse's. Year, at a Rouse's, the local Rouse's tasting. And, uh, she, plowed. What? Yeah. You plowed. <laughs> not, not, not that day. <laughs> um, no, she... It's she, she Jazz. Huh? No, nothing. Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, I I'm like the... I like when so when she did the the tasting at Rouse's, she brought like different samples like chocolates and some types of different nuts and stuff and like paired it with their you know so like it helps you identify the uh, the tasting notes that you're you're supposed to be smelling and tasting and how you can it's something it it tastes different after you try it you know I but, deeply believe in doing sensory tastings because I think everybody has a better palate than they give themselves credit for. They just don't have the vocabulary to speak about it. So often people taste something and they're like, man, what is that? And it's like, right. yeah, it's hard for you to pull out a single spice when you only ever have it in combination with other things. So I, I find sensory tastings to be like, oh, here's a piece of candied ginger or here's a little bit of cinnamon to, to really help people connect the dots. Yeah, that, that was, I found really cool because it, it, it helps, you know, like, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff on my palate that, that I'm like, oh man, this is great. This is great. Well, I can't identify it. So, damn, Phil. <laughs> Thirsty gonna, over there? I didn't know it was a race. Yeah. <laughs> we, do, we do have a lineup. So, uh, uh, um, Karen and Jazz brought us some cool stuff to try. Um, and uh, so, before y'all leave, we probably won't do it on camera because it's kind of a pain to do um we would like y'all to be uh the first autographs on our new barrel top oh my gosh oh, wow. so we we want to have our visitors uh sign our barrel top for us so i think it, it would be nice to uh to have y'all as very y'all are the first guest since we had a barrel top so, wow um if y'all wouldn't you. mind Thank that you. for us uh, yeah would not mind at all awesome so Absolutely. i guess i should work on are this. you good okay you okay <laughs> waiting for the disco 11 you that's are. that's the <laughs> that seems to be the uh that is my favorite bard's town that i've ever had don't rush the process the launching Ooh. pad she told you don't rush the process well, well, it well is. we already rushed phase one <laughs> <laughs> so alcohol goes look. bad if what in a few years <laughs> <laughs> it um, take you that long to finish a bottle if i like <laughs> it I'll, I'll got some store picks that are probably three years old yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I get sure. sad. I get too sad. I'm too sentimental. Well, that's why I hold on to bottles. Like, even so, I was starting to do this whole thing where, uh, you know, special bottles, right? Like, cut the top off of them and fill it with, like, uh, with wax and do a candle, a scented candle with it. Oh, nice. Because I don't want to get rid of a bottle. Oh, nice. Especially bottles that somebody gives me as a gift. It's like, oh, yeah. I can't get rid of this, you know? That's a great way to do so, it. Yeah, I love uh, that. What's, uh, what's, what's y'all's philosophy? Like, like, what's the approach, you know, when y'all are doing the whiskey? Like, what, you know, I know there's like. I was, I was reading up about um, the ignition software. That's kind of where I was going with it. Yeah. So I think, um, obviously, I'll speak for Bardstown. Karen will talk about Green River. Any time that we are making decisions, we're holding three things in mind. We want to be innovative, we want to be collaborative, we want to be transparent. And we've tried to work that into every part of who we are. So transparency, not just in being honest about what's in our bottles by putting it on the side, but that's our architecture. You show up and right when you pull in, you can see two of our three 40-foot column stills. Like we we want people to think transparency when they think of Bardstown. Um, collaboration, um, each of our collaborative series are unique barrel finishes with other partners in the industry, but we always put their name and their logo on the bottles so that you know where the flavor's coming from. Um, and then being innovative, and that's that's part of it too, the, the ignition system. So with that, we're able to control 500 different points of distillation. It makes us one of the most customizable distilleries. So when you're able to play in that many directions, you, you have this free license to, to be a little playful. Um, because we've only been around for a little while, we're not handcuffed to any tradition. So we get to, we know what bourbon's been, what can bourbon be? Uh, part of that too is our glass front uh, Rick House. It's the first of its kind. It's an experiment in progress. We're seeing what a couple of hours of sunlight each day does to the flavor profile of the whiskey and determining like, would this be a great bottle on its own is this a a way that we could finish something and get a lot of flavor out of it if something else other liquid had been held in that barrel first so 
that's one of the things I love about Bardstown is that we're we're really approaching whiskey in a creative way. It's kind of a cutting edge. Uh, I I like future of bourbon. That's yeah. that's so that's the that's one of the things I do like about Bardstown is like they're not anchored in tradition as, as much as like oh well, it's got to have this this and that. Y'all's tradition is. I guess exploration, you know, like. And I love that you said that. Yeah, I think that that's we we want to be like a, a trailblazer in a lot of ways. I, I'm a fan. <laughs> what um, about what about Green River? What's what's yeah, their mindset yeah. philosophy? You know, we have we have a long standing tradition. I mean, because we're on the original property, and we were Green River, mm -hmm. uh, and then when Green River burned in 1918 and it didn't come back. It, when the distillery was rebuilt for 60 years, it was under the Medley ownership. Okay. And during that time period that they had it, um, products such like Ezra Brooks and Mellow Corn and, you know, really good brands were produced for 60 years there. So it again went dormant. And when we revived it, we, we still have the same copper doublers that they used. Wow. You know, and it's working just fine. <laughs> and, you know, as you guys know, the copper doubler is, is the main tool that refines that liquid. And so for us, it's about maintaining that tradition of a high standard. We do use a computerized system. We don't, our system isn't set up like Bardstown where we can do, a, you know, 60 different mash bills. Right. We do about five or six different mash bills, but we stay consistent with those. So the quality of it, you know, um, are, we only have one still. Right. You know, it's a 54-inch column still. It's four stories tall. So, you know, that those are the things that it's a little bit more traditional, um, but we want to maintain that high standard of quality on everything mm -hmm. um, because, because the tradition, uh, the history is there. You don't want to, I guess, I don't want to say upset the apple cart, but it's... It's, it is what it is, you know, and I think for for us being two distilleries together, it's the perfect marriage. Like you know, we, we get to, coin. right, it's the yin and the yang. We get to walk back into time at our distillery, but you see the, the massive still that we have, the 27 fermentation tanks that we have, you know. Uh, you, you go to our Bardstown facility and we have three stills and we have, you know, how many tanks now? We just added, gosh. Oh my gosh, I want to say... 40 48 yeah where it's it's insane wow. so we you know we have the ability to be old and traditional mm -hmm. uh and then we have the ability to be new and innovative so is that is that part of what the i guess the marriage between bardstown and green river is doing is kind of helping y'all expand output yeah so well really for us it's not as much in the output we've been producing ninety thousand barrels a year since about 2017 2018 okay uh and now this year we'll hit about one hundred six thousand barrels a year okay so cool. we we have um we have a deep supply of of product um and while we do a lot of contract distillation uh it, it has been for us we didn't do as much as what we do at bardstown uh, so we were we have a little bit more of a caveat that we have a little bit more back stock, uh, and we don't have the, um, you know, we don't have a, a fear of running out of anything because okay. we're we're producing quite a bit. That's awesome. We're we're like our Barstown sister distillery. We're a twenty four seven operation. On on a fifty four inch uh, still, what so is, how how fast does that push out product? I mean, it's a. Yeah. Yeah, we've been doing, um, we, you know, I'm sorry, it's a couple technical. I'm kind of a nerd. No, you're good. <laughs> you're, you're good. Um, we, we run between 350 and 400 barrels a day on the still. Oh, wow. At a, at a 24 hour operation. So at, at its highest peak, we were doing a hundred gallons a minute. Jesus. I did not even know that. That's <laughs> yeah. impressive. That's yeah. crazy. But you know, that also strains other systems. So um, you know, we do a three-day fermentation process. Uh, we have 27 fermentation tanks. Takes nine of our tanks to run through the still in a day, uh, and so we're doing. You know, do y'all do anything crazy aged? Um, well, not yet, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, you know, because we started a month before, mm -hmm. our, you know, so we're right neck and neck. Uh, we will. We've set barrels aside to be those eight, ten, twelve, fifteen-year barrels. Uh, yeah, so cool. we'll see as we as we come as we come through. Uh, right now we're just coming into having some eight-year-old barrels. I will tell you that um, they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't doubt it. They're really good. <laughs> as long as we can find them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. 
another thing that I want to mention about things being like kind of a perfect marriage and serendipity and all that. So Green River used to have wood fermenters, right? We did. Yeah. And man, I can imagine the flavor that adds. So I know where you're going. Yeah, with this. absolutely. So I, I know where you're going with this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so the Medleys, uh, Charles Medley uh, was operating the distillery until the early 90s. And when he closed the distillery, um, the, the cypress wood fermentation tanks were a hot commodity. And so he sold them. And the, the place that he sold them to was Maker's Mark. Hmm. So Maker's Mark bought those tanks to okay. use the wood to like refurbish their tanks. Well, ironically, the master distiller at the time at Maker's Mark was Steve Nally. So Steve Nally physically came to the distillery and took, dismantled those Cypress tanks, put them in a semi-truck uh, with his crew and drove them back to Maker's Mark. And lo and behold, who is our master distiller now for both? Steve yeah. Nally. Wow. So you got him back? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. you know, because we do different mash bills, you know, we make yeah. the weeded, we make the rye whiskey, you know, Cypress wood tanks, you know, you, you, the cleaning process on them is just insane. It's we already clean ours every three days as it is as we're rotating through on those tanks. So. Um, yeah, I so talking about weeded. Uh, so I like rye spice and I love weeded. Like it's that's just two of my favorites. Yeah, just isn't this great? I I this is one of my favorites. Yeah. So uh, Steve Nally was our employee number one. He came out of a second retirement to come to still for us he had two stipulations he did not want to release anything that was too young so all three of our origin bottles are six years old okay. uh, but he had a mash bill that he'd never made before that he really wanted to make and that's what our bottled and bond mash bill is and i think that that's so exciting like someone who's been in the whiskey business for 50 years right. 32 of those at maker's mark known as the wheat king of kentucky and we got to make his dream mash bill that's like awesome. it's such an approachable bottle it, price uh, wise and is. flavor profile it, and, yeah. and the bottles are pretty like they like oh they, my gosh they're very you. aesthetically pleasing disco yeah. 11 bottles my favorite looking bottle oh. on my shelf okay so you're really ready to get into it, it. i understand do you want do you want this pour uh, <laughs> I, I remember about 15 minutes ago phil was telling me i'm the moderator but he's the one yeah. moderator. Yeah. <laughs> just, just got 11 yeah. rolling we so, see we see where this is going this is a uh, fresh crack right there this is my personal favorite bard style product oh um, per, wow. like so, it's it's, it's okay. probably it's probably up there in in some of my favorite whiskey like, period i have a favorite disco i was gonna say you like eight oh, really? i like you disco eight eight, wow. eight is good well, we so, eight. Eight is good well we blinded them for my birth well i blinded them for my birthday with y'all and i picked the 11 out like i i just know i know the nose that's the grape nose i love that it nose is. So what, what, what's kind of the idea behind the Discovery Series since we went with the... I'm glad that you asked. So our Discovery <laughs> Series is essentially Dan Calloway, our Vice President of New Product Development, going out nice and finding smaller batches of whiskey that have something really unique about them. So he finds something with a nose that he loves or a finish that he loves or a flavor profile and then uh, demonstrates that blending can be this bespoke thoughtful curated thing he's building it up like little little blocks of nuance so each discovery bottle is one and done a totally different flavor profile um and the goal is just to have like a big bold whiskey they tend to be higher proof this one's 118 um that's bigger than and better than the sum of its parts god that's good. so you have the collab series which is basically a collaboration with mostly well, some some whiskey. I know y'all did like prisoner wine. Um, so did, uh, four square rum. Our collaborations are always a unique barrel finish. Uh, we've definitely done like rum, wine, Armagnac, beer. Uh, we last year we did something with Goose Island, and we've got a cool thing coming up with Goose Island. Actually, we sent them our cherry rye barrels. They aged some of their Bourbon County stout in that. Then we aged rye in cherry cherry oak mm -hmm. uh they aged beer in that but finished it in the infrared toasted barrels um and that's that'll release later this year so yeah, a perfect you, pairing I, I, with that pour yeah. that that's your first collab release of the year right 11 the the on the um 
my my Amru? Amru. Oh, are you kidding? Of the yourself, year? Man? I, hmm. I feel like I should know the answer to that, but I feel like my whole life has been a blur. I'm on the road 25 days out of the month. <laughs> Jess, so. Jess, you look at him and say, you put me on the spot, bub. No, I'm just, sit down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot, bub. Um, I refuse well, the answer on the grounds that it can incriminate me. We're drinking Disco well, 11. I'd, I'd love so. to tell you some more about the Disco yeah, 11. I want to tell you about some 11, man. This, uh... This is a super exciting discovery because every time we do this, it's it's always a blend. Um, sometimes there can be as many as five or six whiskeys in it. The rule is that the youngest thing in the bottle is always going to be at least six years old. This is the first time that our own estate distilled product was old enough to be the youngest thing in the bottle. Awesome. So it's three Kentucky bourbons, a 10-year, a 13-year, a 6-year, and the 6-year is ours. So it feels like a real triumph, and I know... It's we're we're hoping to blend more Bardstown into future discoveries. It is so good. It is so good. I, Disco sorry. Eleven. I told you this when you were in town. Like Disco Eleven is is my cream of the crop. I love well, it. Well, what? There's another disco coming. I know. So and it might be your cream of the crop. Well, if the rumors are true, and I'm not going to ask you about the rumors, but uh, <laughs> the only thing I'm going to ask you is: so, is there any idea when Twelve is going to be around? Absolutely. So it is coming out in the fall of this year. Nice. It'll be right around Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Y'all so... fall or our fall? We don't have fall. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Our fall's not until February. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Just kidding. So it'll it'll Fair hit story. around uh, Kentucky Bourbon Festival. So expect it around September. Uh, I'm calling you around that time, and I'm gonna make a trip to come visit. <laughs> right. um, I'm looking. Yeah, forward please to do. It. We. So I don't know if you've been to Kentucky since we put in our downtown tasting room in Louisville. It's what right on risk right on Whiskey Row. We've heard that y'all's new campus is like state of the art, incredible. Oh, we just got these amazing tasting tables, uh, interactive video tables, and they are super sexy. Yeah. They're yeah, they're next level. Um, wow. I'm pretty dazzled. Yeah, my uncle goes to Kentucky. Seems like every three weeks. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, he's probably. <laughs> probably friends with everyone there already it, right yes <laughs> right i'm sure um but no the the disco 12 is is uh it, I mean, i'm sorry disco 11 is i'm doing what she does <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, the disco 11 is one of my favorites Project. for sure um i wanted to ask you this um do y'all have any or have y'all or do y'all have any plans to do a um ambirana finish oh boy i did it again <laughs> i did it too <laughs> No, I'm um, just curious, just because I know y'all do finish with some really cool stuff. I feel like that would be so one of those cool ones. I know that Dan has hopes to. I don't know if we've secured those barrels yet. Okay. But I, I would say to almost any Bardstown question about like a mash bill or an age statement or or something cool that you can do, chances are we're we're either thinking about it or already playing with nice. it. Regardless of whether I know when well, it'll I, hit shelves. About this? I'm not asking you that question. I'm just saying, hey, a suggestion from beyond, <laughs> you, you from beyond the barrel <laughs> bourbon, aside from Disco 12, y'all should do Ambirana. Okay. Call it Beyond the Barrel Bourbon. Right? Bottle. <laughs> Call it the Beyond the Barrel and, Finished and Bourbon. All of our. The we, collab we series. We love alliteration. <laughs> the collab series. Right. Keep so Eric's the one that, that puts people on the spot a lot. Uh, I don't know if you I'm noticing. Know. What is very good at that. You, you put her on the spot. No, man. Uh huh. Oh. I'm just enjoying my pour. Okay, me too. <laughs> I'm trying to slow down this time because I got fussed at <laughs> for finishing too. Jazz, did I put you on the spot? My bad. No, 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 no worries at all. Actually, so when somebody put you on the spot, just respond. You put me on the spot, bub. That's his. That's his thing, man. And he, we haven't put him on the spot enough. You did twice Challenge in the last accepted. show. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Ugh. Yeah, no, I would say ridiculous. sometimes I, I know about things, but I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about things. So if I don't. ever get like a little guilty look, I feel like that's already giving things See, away. Doubt, like... Leave it out. <laughs> don't, don't, that's my, my when legal doubt, advice. Yeah, when in doubt, leave it out. When when in doubt, doubt, leave it out. This dude just stole my gift. I repeated what you just said. It's called a steal. Not when you said it Was that one free advice? second before me. Free of charge. Free advice. Okay, good. I like that. Here. That's a good thing. I would have charged Eric for that. <laughs> well, we brought Not bottles. <laughs> they, they, you're right. They, they, they paid him pours. It's wonderful, isn't it? Jazz, do you get breaks on the next? So, okay. 
That is my number one. Which one? Great. I get grape on this nose grape? big time. So this... Like a sweet grape? So, like a grape flavor. Okay. It, it le- so, so you're not getting grape. grape. You're getting grape flavor. Still, like, grape so flavor, that's what, yeah, that's right. what always... He's getting purple. Yeah. Well, you're getting purple. I mean... Well, no, so, so, like, there's another big brand that I won't mention that I get tons of grapes on. And there's another big brand out there that I get tons of apples on, right? So it's like, it's like, I, I associate things with, with that, well, like, the fruit that I'm getting at the time. I, I can see that. I could see the, I, okay, I could see the grape. grape. I, <laughs> I hate you. I sometimes so get, uh, like, a watermelon so Jolly Rancher. Really? Like, there's this, like, like, this juiciness. I get the juiciness, but I, it's, it's grapes for me. Oh, totally. Well, I I said this in some of my sensory tastings before. Human nose has 400 different olfactory receptors. Those differ 120 from person to person. So your experience with taste and smell, very uniquely your own and based on what you've encountered in the past. Right. Um, so little Debbie. But that also means <laughs> that means no wrong answers. Calm down. Just want to say, don't... Did you did you drink a lot of grape stuff when you were a kid? Yeah, it's always been one of my favorites. So, so that's like... the see the 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 biggest thing there, the quickest thing that you get out of mm-hmm. a bourbon is is a memory. Okay. So like I can pull curing tobacco out of a bourbon really quick because my family uh, we used to grow tobacco. So when you walk into a, a tobacco barn and it's hanging there, the leaves are hanging there. Y- I, I, it's a sweet smell and I can pick that up out of a bourbon really quick. That's all. So for you, if you drank a lot of things that were grape as a child and it was, it, it's a happy memory for you, then you're going to pull that out of a bourbon really easy. And what, what fruit is your favorite office snack? Apples. And what's the other s- fruit you pick up on? Yeah. Apples. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny cause like, uh, the, the Green River, uh, the uh the the bourbon fest pick i get green apples on that yeah like nice. like just like a like not like your typical sweet red apple but like a green apple like more of a tart tangy. like a soury green apple. not i won't say sour but like i'll say more it's not as sweet smelling it's more tart smelling yeah um see it, i like i like green apple i do too so, so i can pull that out too i but yeah. i mean so i mean do you do you get that i can okay yeah and it and it varies it varies by season to be honest with you, it varies by season. Different times, I really can pull one thing out. Uh, other days, other times, whether it's daytime or nighttime, I'll pull something different out too. I can tell this is Disco Eleven because I'm nursing it because I, lo- <laughs> I just let- I love it. I'm done. Shocked. Of course you are. I'm shocked. I do know with that, I only bought two bourbon Nola Bourbon Fest picks, and that was one of them. That one in the uh, we have a local seven three distillery here. I picked one up from, um, but, but that one, um, again, another good price point bottle. Yeah. That, I mean that I've heard, I haven't had, I've, I've purchased it, have not received the foolproof yet. I've heard that that drinks, it just punches above. Wow. It's, you it, know, $45, $50. Well, I wish, I, I wish I could price. open this bottle that I brought, but <laughs> unfortunately, I don't. Well, well. <laughs> Phil makes the rules. I mean, he said she can't open it. So. I just, I just have I would to. Never tell Phil would what. never. <laughs> he would not. <laughs> Are you ready? I mean, can you handle it? Are you ready? I was no. born ready. This, this is what I got my law degree for. To, yeah. Was to drink yeah. bourbon. Oh my. Well, to drink <laughs> bourbon on a random Thursday. <laughs> on a random Thursday. It's, you got your law degree so you could do a podcast. I mean, it's. Thank you what 5 45 in the afternoon so what yeah work i was a little bit more how did it get to be that it. time <sighs> so, so what's the proof on this well i i don't know that i want to tell you right away okay Ooh, that's yeah, awesome. let me take you on a little I, I think, flavor journey i think we should go just on a little journey here i want to i want to try to guess it though first. okay that's <laughs> fine like, um like so this is what we, is... what, what we did on this one was we, we took our, our flagship bourbon. So it's the 70 corn, 21 rye, mm-hmm. 9 malt. And, you know, we heard people, we listened to our consumers, and they wanted a higher proof. Our initial flagship came out at 90 proof, uh, which is a great drinking bourbon. I mean, it's, it, it's wonderful to sip on. It holds up well in a cocktail. 
Um, but you know, we have a lot of people that like that higher proof. So we decided to come out with a full proof. Um, and we took a little over, was over 200 barrels. Uh, we dumped them together. We found a flavor profile that we liked. We did not add any water to this. Uh, when we proofed it, it came out at this particular proof. Um, it smells awesome. So we're yeah. going to do what Eric does and say, I think this is somewhere between I'm gonna give a exact, 100 and 127 I'm going to give an exact number. Is You're going to give an exact number? And I have never seen this bottle. I, I promise I, I've never seen I'm, this bottle. I, yeah, I, we I, surprised him just, with it. Just so you know, I, yeah, I brought it in today. We, we had it at our... Uh, event with tails they so. did bring some cool stuff in for us to try we I'm like what is it like sugar like caramel are, 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 are you not there's no, no such thing or is there is, there's are, no such thing there's a way I, there's caramel. a second a. the dictionary says i don't it's care what your dictionary protein. says the real the, the real word is caramel you know caramel i'm getting some of those so some of those traditional bourbon notes Do you, are you getting those? oak i'm getting oak on this no it's all sweet to me it's 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 very sweet it's to brown, me sugar. Too. brown sugar brown sugar absolutely shavings? no man this is like a decadent nose that's yeah. his favorite it, it, that's it his is. favorite profile i'm gonna to me this does not nose like a high proof it does not at all because typically higher proofs kind of burn your senses yeah there's no burn in here there is nothing wow that does not drink hot either 123.4 there is no burn on the palate. I don't think it's... I, it doesn't drink that high, but I'm just taking no. a wild guess that that's 120. Between 117.5 and 123.4. Oh, here we go. You said an exact number. I, yeah, 123.4. That's what I'm going with. That's, that's, that, is that your final answer? That's my final answer. That's your final answer. Bill. Mm. Bill, what yeah, do we guess. Just give a Just throw a number out there. God, I hope you're wrong. Well, if you <laughs> nailed it to the decimal point... He did not point, nail it. I didn't nail it. I knew that for sure. It means you looked it up. I didn't. And I'm guessing I'm probably too high. I mean... I feel like this is a trick question. Just throw a number out I there. I feel like it's going to be higher than what it, it's, 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 what it's drinking. I would assume it's not as high as I'm giving it, but there's a potential that it could be just because of the robust flavors. But to remember, higher proof doesn't... You know, a higher proof doesn't give you more flavors necessarily. You can get a lot of flavors from a lower proof. Right. You you just have to allow your hmm. mind to know it. If you don't know the proof ahead of time, you're going to get more out of the bourbon. So many people grab a bottle, they look at the proof, oh, I'm going to like this, and they drink it, and then they're, oh, I don't <laughs> like it. You know, instead, you need to enjoy the bourbon. I'm going between 117 and 121. Not these no, crazy no, eyes. No, sir. Sure. <laughs> this, this is a little... No, sir. Can that's we, my, can we that's... trade seats? I was going to say, Karen, you need me to get over there? <laughs> that's my... I nailed Jazz, it. Jazz, I think you picked the right seat. <laughs> that's my... I nailed it. What, so... Is that your final that's answer? Like, like, no, no, right? no, no. Is that no, your... no, ma'am. Make him guess one solid number like okay, he did today. Okay, so you're, you are... One, I, 123.4? 123.4, and you are... Which you already said I'm wrong, so... 117... Six. <laughs> so I feel like he cheated. He did. One seventeen point three. He cheated. <laughs> He's got one on the way. Yeah. I mean, he already knows. He already knows. Yeah. He already knows. Like, that's what Phil does. Yeah. He researches. But, He's smart. I'll that was legit. He's smart. That was he researches. I'm sitting next to him. He gave a little sneaky Google. Because I, I, I feel it. like no. Because <laughs> I originally was gonna go with one twenty one something, but I feel like when you were talking to him. You were kind of dropping hints that it might not. It is. It might is. not be. But here's. You let him lawyer us. No, I did. He, he <laughs> lawyer. Re up. I read the room, man. Yeah, he read the room. <laughs> this guy here. Um. Yeah. One seventeen point three. And it's it's good. It's, it's very good. It does. To me, it doesn't drink like it's one seventeen point three. No. I personally feel like it drinks more like it's in the in the one hundred eight, one ten, one maybe one twelve. I don't feel mm -hmm. like when once you bridge one twelve, one fifteen. You notice a distinct difference yeah. in the amount of heat that's coming off of that, you know, from from just the the proof of the alcohol. Um, I always tell people this this drinks, it's scary smooth. It's scary mm, smooth it's how very... it drinks because it, it will it will sneak up on you. I get you're, al you're also getting like those kind of decadent like syrupy flavors. Oh going yeah, palate, I get a ton of vanilla you, on this. Vanilla to I I get a lot of vanilla. I pick up butterscotch. I pick up caramel. I pick up brown sugar. Oh, she did it too. She lost the second A. And caramel. Caramel. She lost the second A. Caramel on the nose. You definitely get caramel Jazz, brown sugar. 
I'm I'm not Vanilla. out here saying caramel. What do you say? Caramel. Yeah. I'm from Michigan. I feel like oh, we're wow. just smashing words together all the time. Whatever. I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take the room over here if you want to sit over here. I'd, I'd, I'd say well, I didn't if you want the buffer after the eyes. I'd give her creepy eyes. On the yeah, yeah, I, I feel comfortable I should, here. I feel point. safe here. Yeah, yeah, I nailed it, eyes. I just, yeah, yeah, I nailed, nailed it. it. I nailed. But I'd say on the palate, it, it, it's in the 17 and 107, 110. Yeah, I Yeah, for sure. That's craftsmanship, baby. Because you're getting those more decadent, yeah, like syrupy, richer flavors kind of help. And, and less heavy, like, well, we had it on the heels of the Disco 11, which you're going to get more, like, rye spices from. I, I, I um, guess. And to me, the, the spice is always, spices can make things drink hotter. Yes. Um, than their proof, which is not a bad thing or a good thing. Um, I but think this he, is more decadent core for me. Yeah. I, 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 to me, it's a, a very much a sipping bourbon. I like this. Absolutely. I mean, it's one that when you sit out, you come back to it 20 minutes later, it's changed. You come back to it another 20 minutes later, it's changed again. Well, he'll never so know. He'll he's never been know. Them <laughs> <in winter time. laughs> what you're saying is, yeah, you need a little bit more. Oh. This is one of the ones where you drink it, and then like 30 minutes later, you've had six, and you're like, where, I am where, where did it go? Where did where my did bottle it, go? <laughs> where did it go? But that's it. That That is the truth. That it's. That's why I tell people, I caution people, the foolproof is very deceiving. It, it it will sneak up on you because you are drinking 117 proof. That we you know proof doesn't lie, but it doesn't drink like that. Right. So and it's and deceiving for sure. Right and again like like our sister distillery Bardstown, we non chill filter everything. So you're getting those good oils in it. Even when you mm -hmm. hold up the glass, you can see it. So when you go back, I wish I knew. Yeah. <laughs> well, you go back and you notice the glass now. It's you. You're still picking up those aromas oh, out yeah. of it. It's um, really nice. So a thing that I want to say on proof, when we're making our discoveries, once we figure out the blend, we taste it in a bunch of different proofs because sometimes it's only a couple of points that make a huge difference in what's jumping forward or what's yep. lingering. So that type of jump might end up creating crazy flavors that you're like, I hate this pour. Yeah, well, that's fair. Yeah, you, you, I think you have to be careful with that because the other thing too that we like she was jazz was saying is that we do test them at different proofs because we're we're trying to find the happy medium you know so often she and i are out and and we're talking to people and they're like uh, oh i never drink anything on the rocks i never add water to it and and i'm the first one to tell people well shame on you because right. because when we've tried it we've tried it multiple ways and we've mm -hmm. tried them in cocktails and we've tried them you know, with the cube of ice, with a drop of water, and it will totally change the flavor profile of it. So it's like, you know, I always say, taste your bourbon neat, mm -hmm. but enjoy it how you want to enjoy it because it's meant to be enjoyed. So then what, know, is, not... what is traditionally the way y'all prefer to drink your, your bourbon? I would say the traditional way is whatever makes you happy. I myself... I'm a cocktail girly. Yeah, cocktail. What's your favorite I, cocktail? So I've been drinking a ton of Manhattans lately, and Manhattan. my preference for sweet vermouth is Carpano Antica. Um, I think that it's just a like a rounder, richer mouthfeel, and that is my my favorite thing. If I have a Origin Series weeded Carpano Manhattan, that's for me. And you? So for me, I I enjoy <laughs> drinking my bourbon neat. Me too. But that being said, if I'm out and like this week, especially at tails and we're, it's cocktails, you know, this mm -hmm. is what we're doing. And it's 4,000 degrees. Outside. It's 4,000 <laughs> degrees outside. I mean, I've had some amazing ones today. We were at the will on the way and they did a amazing, it was bourbonina colada and they yeah. used our, mm. our whiskey in it and made it into basically a, a pina colada, but made with bourbon. Okay, and that is fantastic. it was off the charts. Um, but, uh, my go-to when I'm out is an espresso martini made with any one of our bourbons. Really? We have yeah. been drinking right the bourbon eyes. espresso martinis yeah. all yes. over this nation. Yes. And yes. all over the nation. Yeah. So if I want a sweeter uh, espresso martini, I use our weeded bourbon. Mm -hmm. I ask for our weeded. If I want a just, a, just what I consider a normal, then I'll use our black label, which is our high rye bourbon. And if I want it to give me a kick, then I use our rye whiskey. Wow. And it is, I always tell people. Yeah, but yeah. also the 
the Goose Island, Goose Island as a espresso martini is yep. so good because it's already so like chocolatey, malty, rich, like a little hint of honey that gets along so well with coffee. So it's. I'm surprised y'all didn't say uh, an old fashioned with Bardstown rye. I love old fashions. I feel like for me at this point in my life <laughs> and my career, um, if I would rather have a neat pour than an old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy the flavor of the bourbon. So, so, so do I. Mom. So that's calling me. That's thing. Oh. oh, sorry, mom. Wow, you got ma. Oh, oh, after, you got ma. After the show, okay. it says ma. Ma. M A. Ma. I'm gonna be honest. I my might not have pops. admitted it on air. I would have just been like, "Oh, I can't take oh, this call no, right now." No, like now we... she's gonna watch this episode and be like, "Oh, she will. No, oh, please. She, she will too." I don't know. If she will. <laughs> She'll watch it when his dad puts it on at the house. <laughs> So, well, my default cocktail in determining if I like a, a drink as a mixer is the old fashioned. Cause, okay. Cause, well, to me, like, I'll, I'll mix a rum in there. Some of the best old mm-hmm. fashions I've had have been yeah, rum old. Some of the unique yeah. twists on them, yeah. Uh, same thing with tequila. Put a tequila in there. Um, and then just. The good thing about. An old fashioned is that you can have some, some like I'm not gonna put Disco Eleven in an old fashioned. No, um, but you could. But you could. You I could. could. I, I but think... it's like you don't want to waste like well, okay, good whiskey. But, on so, <laughs> but I I hear you and I combat that with. Um, I'm gonna agree with this because I know where be she's going. Old fashioned. I ever... Well, well, so kind of like for example, our Foursquare collab. One of my favorite collabs we've ever made. And like everything that we do, one and done, like even if we work with them again, it'll be different liquid going into those barrels, totally different flavor profile. I love that in a Hemingway daiquiri. And people are like, this is a very expensive bottle for you to just be making daiquiris with it. But it's, it's like, well, I have a one-time opportunity in my life to have one of the best flavor profile daiquiris. So, heck yeah, I want to do that. I would, I would imagine a four square, the four square collab would make a killer because the four square rum yes we just said that the other night we had the four square uh old fashions yeah uh, and that was delicious they were delicious i so 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 in essence i kind of go back to what she originally said drink your whiskey the way you want to drink it, it. that's exactly totally. i always tell people taste it neat yeah so that you understand the flavors you know not a lot of people aren't used to drinking bourbon neat that it's too strong for them you know or they don't understand it yet so I always tell people, taste it neat. You enjoy it however you want to enjoy it. I've got a buddy that's a crown drinker. He loves crown and coke. And I was like, man, just try this. I'm like, and I poured, I don't know what I poured, something like, I don't know, like an Eagle Ray or something. I poured him something like kind of allocated, but like not super expensive. I'm like, try this. Yep. Oh, this is terrible, bro. This is awful. <laughs> and that probably hurt your heart. You were like, what? I'm like, dude, are you serious? Here, pour that in my glass real quick. Yeah. I'll finish it for you. And I mean, it's well, like, come on, man. And, but sometimes, and, and a lot of people make an error assuming that like lower proofs will be more approachable for a newcomer it's, yep. yeah but I agree. sometimes that ethanol it, it, I agree. Sneak up forward on. yeah in those lower proofs more than it does in some of the higher proofs. i think it depends on your lower proofs i think it depends on the age of the bourbon because a lot of times you'll see a lower proof bourbon at a younger age uh because you know for whatever reason either they're just trying to get something out or or whatever the case might be um, I get a lot of people, everybody always wants to, when I'm doing tastings, uh, they always want to start with a weeded bourbon and they say, oh, wheat is sweeter, you know, which is true. You know, we, we, we say wheat is sweet, rye is dry and spicy. Um, but from a palate standpoint, the wheat can actually be spicier to some people's palates than our high rye bourbon. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I, I get more people to actually enjoy the high rye bourbon that we have versus yeah versus the wheat and i and i challenge people all the time if you're if you're not sure give yourself put three pours out get your palate don't you know don't try not to eat anything and put anything on your palate and then go through and try them because everybody's palate's different it, it doesn't mean you're right or wrong it's just it will sit differently on everybody's palate um yeah i um uh, i forgot where i was going with this <laughs> well, we need I'm to. We need where, 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 where we're going is so, to the single barrel. Yeah, my glass. <laughs> yeah. No, this I was the, the Nola Bourbon Fest pick. This yeah. is fantastic. Oh yeah. This is this is fantastic. Um, no, what I was gonna say. So I am a big fan of high rye, 
Mm-hmm. And I'm also a big fan of weeded. So like I've always and, and, and this is a weird thing and I don't I don't get it from there. I, I get a little bit more from y'all's weeded mm-hmm. than I do from their weeded, uh the bready smell. Yeah, so uh, y'all's don't yours has more bread on it, yours does not. Yours is more fruit forward. So we use a I diff- think. we I use a different that. kind of, of wheat. So what we did, which is very unusual, uh our weeded and our high rye. They're the exact same. They're identical mash bills with the same yeast strain, mm-hmm. uh, which is very unusual. So um, our weeded is 70 corn, 21% soft red winter wheat, mm-hmm. and 9% malted barley. And then our high rye is 70 corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. So you're literally looking at mirror mash bills. Okay. And so you can distinctly see the difference between a weeded bourbon and a, and a rye bourbon. And I think that's pretty pretty fun to do because it truly shows people the difference between between the two so uh, this is so good this one actually gives me a little more fruit yeah the full proof yeah i still do get some that, that vanilla I just pick up sweet i get caramel I get vanilla. yeah i, get a I just lot pick more, up sweet i get a lot more caramel in this one than the full proof this one smells a little sweeter to me like as far as like um a little bit of fruit on the nose. It's almost like the full proof with a little fruit added to me. Oh, and guys, I'm still getting vanilla. I... Still getting caramel. Caramel. Nice. Caramel. <laughs> Thank you. I get. Uh... <laughs> see when you see she came on board with me because I didn't give her creepy eyes. Well, she probably felt bad. And for I'm you. stuck. I, I yeah. promise you, she did. She's the one who feels bad. I'm bro. a little scared. Guys, listen. If y'all are getting anything out of this, or if you're not, uh, go ahead and hit that like, comment, subscribe button. We appreciate all of the support and all the feedback. They need it. No, I'm just <laughs> it's true. We, it is true. We I really mean, do. she she did take low blow on us, but so, she, brought, she brought bottles, so it's okay. We forgive. I get like a little bit of orange peel. Yeah, like the, I did pick up some citrus on this of, one. Uh, yeah, these barrels were fun. These, huh? It's a little fruitier to me. Than yeah, this is. Yeah, I say citrusy, but fruity. I can I can see that too. I use I use uh, fruity when I'm being lazy. <laughs> it don't want to have to think about a specific fruit. I'll just say fruity. And that way I'll just cover the spectrum. Uh, cool trick for you guys at home. <laughs> just say fruity. And you can't be wrong. Yeah, you can't be wrong. This barrel yes. was fun. Um, I remember when we did this barrel because uh, we were trying to get this in to have it ready for, for the NOLA Bourbon Fest. So this one is um, 119 proof. Um, yeah. What... What is Green River coming out with this year that we can look forward to or next year? Maybe this fall. Yeah, we've had a busy year this year. Yeah. So um, from a timeline standpoint, we, we brought, came out with our 95.5 Rye mm-hmm. in February. And then on June 7th, we launched our Full Proof. Uh, the Full Proof we came out with, um, we actually did 7,000 cases of it and expecting it to last us the rest of the year. I've not seen it. Uh, okay, well, let me, let me just share with well. you that it sold out in a month and a half. Wow. That's how popular it was. So, uh, but don't don't panic. Uh, the, second, <laughs> the second batch is already in the works. Uh, it's set to be bottled here shortly and it'll be back out on the market. But understand that because these are basically like small batches, the proof will be different on the next mm-hmm. batch. So if you can find one of the, what I call now the first release, which is 117.3, um, you know, grab it because that's this one. Obviously, you guys know it's stellar. It is um, one. You do have yeah. one. <laughs> and, and we, again, with our price point, our, our core three, our weeded, our high rye, and our rye whiskey, they're all line priced. Our suggested retail price is $35 a bottle. Wow. And wow. then our foolproof suggested retail price is, is $49.99, so $50 a bottle. Note she says suggested. Yeah, <laughs> that, that. it is. I mean, unfortunately, you know, you 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 know, we we do get we this is what we suggest. We want people to drink it. Um it, unfortunately there are gonna be places that'll charge more, but I got it for under fifty. They yeah. were, they were. Yeah. Under, under Bourbon two and, and then uh Bourbon Tube loves the full proof. Yeah. They love it. I mean, I kind of love it too, man. Yeah. Everybody says it's punching above its, it's way. Price it's point. punching way above its all, price point. Everything that we've had today punches above its weight. Yeah. Why, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Well, we're trying. We're, we're, trying. <laughs> we're, we're trying to do, you know, it's understandable with our Bargetown line that when we do collapse, it's going to cost more because, you know, we're having to work with these other companies. And so you have to take 
that into consideration. Right. So, but when we're doing our core lines of our origins or our Green River, then we have that luxury that it's it's in house, and so we do we do get that. So I, I always tell people, you know, your our collabs, our discoveries, they're well worth their price point. You, you just have to get your mind right on it to understand what's gone into it. You know. We did a we did an episode where we were we talked. It wasn't that long ago where we talked about we named our current favorite distilleries. Mm -hmm. Bardstown. Was, Bardstown was both. It was in both of ours. It was Love lovely. to hear it. Where was Green River? <laughs> well, so <laughs> honestly, that was before I had my first Green. River. Yeah, we oh, was we, it really. So we recently, I didn't have a Green River until that. You know, we that's so. One of our, are we going to redo this? Right. How how often? We do it every, we do it every year. We do so one of our things every year. year. One of our things. So we we do generally two episodes early in the year. What are we looking forward to this year? Like like new releases that are coming out. Like like I think one of them was like the uh, the the wood wood finishing series that Maker's Mark brought back out. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. You know, so like obviously going. Huh? We had a lot of. We had a lot, we did have a lot of them, um, yeah, like the like the blood oaths and and uh, which we we had the blood oath and uh, I mean I had turkey fifteen I mean Russell's fifteen that's the second time we've called it turkey fifteen uh, no and and honestly Bardstown was in our was way up in the top for us um, yeah yeah and honestly uh, now that we've had the Green River stuff like because again we we just recently stumbled on Green River when everybody's like. Dude, you gotta try the the Nola Bourbon Fest pick. It's fantastic, and we yeah. grabbed it. And we're like, oh my god, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, this is really good. Yeah, we did that episode before I I had the Bourbon Fest. Pick. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so excited that Green River is new to you, and then you get to talk to Karen about it. She is one of the most knowledgeable people at the distillery about the history of the brand. Um, started off as a tour guide, and then they acknowledged her wealth of knowledge and like passion for the brand. They were like, you should actually be representing us nationwide well so, have y'all noticed y'all have noticed an uptick in like interest oh yeah in the... oh yeah absolutely i mean it's it's been a great thing when we first launched in uh set um september in, in february of 2022 we were in four states and we had a sales team of one and a half um <laughs> I, was, you, I was the half i was saying were you the uh, one I, or the half i was the half <laughs> uh and god bless byron for putting up with me for that long but uh but um, so when we were bought by Bardstown, we immediately were able to go into 21 more markets. Wow. And, and the beauty of it is we had the product. We, so, we weren't limited. We weren't strapped on, the, on that. And they saw the value of the history of the brand. I mean, not many, you know, there's a, there's, I mean, there's a ton of great distilleries out there, not just in Kentucky, but all over the place. Yeah. But to say that we're on the original property of where this was in That's 1885, awesome. and, and I always tell people, you know, we're the yin and the yang, like I said earlier. You walk back into time when you come to our distillery. We're, we've got buildings from the 40s and the 50s, you know, and because everything burned in 1918, it obviously it got rebuilt. But then you go to Bardstown, and we're brand new, state-of-the-art glass. It's beautiful. Fantastic restaurant. So, okay, so uh, I guess a little bit, so people I know. About that restaurant, by the way. Uh, hey, I'm one. I'm shocked that I finished before both. Of oh them. my god! Oh, wow. Oh, uh, so no. So, I, do y'all both do? Y'all? I know y'all do distillery tours. Do you guys do distillery tours also? Not public tours per se, no. but we do private. I mean, if there's VIPs. large groups, VIPs. So, yeah. So beyond the barrel followers. I'm sure, <laughs> sure. If we're in town, but somebody somebody asked Jasmine one time, and I thought this was the greatest answer, and I steal it from her all the time. So where do you live? And she said Marriotts. Everywhere, and, and that's right. and that's the truth. That's where we live. We absolutely, live, you know. Um, I bet you're racking up those bomb void points like crazy. My Marriott status sounds fictional. I'm <laughs> Jesus. titanium elite. What? Yeah, right? What does oh that even God. mean? It means you don't pay for hotels. Well, it means that I get upgrades. <laughs> it means you don't pay for, for like suites on the corner overlooking the water. And and we joke about it all the time. I mean, uh, we're currently on a 14-day road trip right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we started our trip. I started in Orlando. She met me in Jacksonville. Uh, we don't always get to travel together. Sometimes we're apart and, and across the country from each other. Um, but we won't get home until the 30th, I guess, late, yeah. late on the 29th. We get back to our respective homes in Kentucky. Um, I know I turn around and head up to Michigan. She turns around and I, I go to Columbus, she Ohio. Goes to Ohio. Um, so, you know, while we thoroughly enjoy our jobs, um, it makes me so happy to be able to represent a brand that I'm so passionate about. 
in our history, um, you know, all jokes aside, we, we don't see our, our families very much. We don't get to have that home time. So um, we do value it. Yeah. Lot. And honestly, it wouldn't work if we didn't love the brands. Like, yeah. I'm, no, for sure. I'm proud of everything that Bardstown yeah. does. I'm excited to share it with people. And so it makes it easy to, to go on a 14 day trip. Right. Um, and we meet fantastic people. Right, I exactly. Mean, I know like, you want to refer to us. Like, <laughs> excluded, but... <laughs> you. You're not the first person Wait, to say that. Y'all are, y'all are good jazz. Give me, where's my... Right. <laughs> Appreciate that. So, it's not I'll a good thing. Tell. The guy it's that okay, gives the crazy you. eyes. It's not a good Wait, thing. Wait, don't provoke it. It's the only love I get on this show. I'm going to take it. Um, <laughs> Wait, we better get some, no, like, some listen, more whiskey uh, in that glass. For, no, for real. Like, from both from both of us, for... From from our guys, like thank y'all for joining us for real. Like like the fact oh that y'all made time to come spend some time with us is awesome, uh, oh. and we truly appreciate that. No, it's you know it's it's we love sharing our stories, and not it's not our stories, it's our brand stories, and you know we're just uh, we've just been, I guess, blessed enough to be able to to be chosen to be able to do that, and then to get people excited about bourbon. You know, if I can take one person. And get them to just see what I'm trying to say. You don't have to agree with me. Try it, Nate. Just try it. Just try <laughs> it. And, and if I can get them to do that, I've, I've accomplished my goal. I do like what she did, right? So, like, I think that that show that you did when we met, right? When you had the the sensory tastings, I think somebody that's just getting into bourbon yeah. would benefit wholeheartedly from that, right? Um Oh, look, you're supposed to taste chocolate. Listen, if I gave this to my wife, she'd be like, what the hell is this? Like, this, yeah. I don't want this. But like, like, look, try this piece of chocolate and then try it. See if you can identify that. I think that is probably single-handedly one of the best things you could do for a new bourbon. Like somebody you're trying to oh. introduce. Don't yeah. give them a lord. We've done that to people. <laughs> okay, so I mean, you've hated me. people. You've hated them. Don't like rosemary and thyme. <laughs> yeah, smell like rosemary and thyme. No, we, we, so, listen, we tell people all the time, look, if you tell us you watch our show and you don't, We'll find out. And they're like, no, you you can't find out. Okay. Well, like when you're on the show as a guest, we pour you my lord. Don't be surprised. <laughs> Don't be surprised. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes something as simple as just having a sheet in front of them. Like if, if you're coming into a tasting, nosing, picking out flavors on the palate just completely blind, uh, you might not be thinking of peach. No, I or, get, I or, get absolutely. that. I respect that. Just but seeing it. having those those little triggers, yes, learning it, tools, it, man. Well, yeah. it works. It, Reminders. It, Jasmine and I both have the same, pretty much. No, I won't say the same. Respective to our brands. She added the no, mind to the end of your name. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we both have sensory tastings. Okay. And what we do is we cater it to our brands and and our products. Obviously, they're different. You're going to get different things out of it. Um. But uh, I always tell people, our minds have a massive vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Hers is off the charts. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but, um, but when it comes to trying to describe, like she said earlier, what am I tasting? That's our, that's our job, is to help you understand and help you be able to describe it. You know, I, I, I use tasting, I use a tasting horseshoe because a horseshoe is part of our logo. I was going to ask you, where does the horseshoe logo, not to cut you off, I want yeah. you to finish that, but oh the, then tell me after. This is a, yeah, I a think wonderful this is, question. I, I think this is great. So, uh, you know. Um, Wait, you're not finishing what you were saying. I am going to finish what I, I, I cut you off. I use, I, use, uh, I use a tasting horseshoe. You know, if anybody's ever gone through and done a tasting wheel, Mm -hmm. If you look at a tasting wheel, they're very complicated. They have words on there that I can't even pronounce. She might be able to, but I can't. She's an English major, not me. And he's a lawyer. I mean, yeah, I'm right, exactly. Lawyer. They're going to say those things, right, them. exactly. Yeah, and, and, you know, you're looking at those words and you're going, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. I don't know how to say this. It's caramel. So, so I... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> true he's special um wow. so we, we i broke it down to make it simpler to the things that i get out of our bourbon so that makes it more relatable and it's not so scary to everybody when they're looking at it um but to your point the horseshoe um all of our bottles are unique because they are flat with a round on it which means they're in the shape of a horseshoe yeah and the horseshoe was part of the original logo from 1885. Is there something related to the horses or something? Back yeah, then? no, back I then? think it's just a sign of good luck. Okay. It was a sign of good luck. So um, when we brought the brand back, we had to honor the history of the brand mm -hmm. because it was such an iconic brand. 
So we have the horseshoe. Uh, we have, it, it's all rigid here. Uh, that's to emulate the rivets that were on the original logo. We put the faux tax stamp because awesome. this used to be a bottled and bond product. Back pre-prohibition, this was the official whiskey of the United States Marine Hospital. Wow. Yeah. Okay, the, awesome. the double and wow is that you apply every year. You don't just get it. Yeah. And so... Is it still like that Triple wow. No, 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 no. no. Wow or is a hospital no. headed no. official whiskey. Yeah, right, right. So <laughs> pre -pro no, actually, pre-prohibition so whiskey was medicinal. It was, med actually, That's what right. it was medicinal. You, you would go to the doctor, you would get a script... You would go and then get your, your pint, yeah. your half pint of whiskey, take X amount so many times a day. And like Jazz was saying, uh, you the distilleries had to petition the federal government every year to be awarded that contract. And Green River won that award for 18 years. Oh, wow. 18 years it was the official whiskey. And it wasn't just the U.S. Marine Hospital. That encompassed the public health systems and the U.S. embassies as well. Jesus. So it was important for us to honor the history of this brand when we brought it back. So we did that, you know, to do the bottle unique and and to put all of these, uh, you know, little little trinkets on it. Like little Easter eggs. Yeah, for, little Easter eggs. Hey, if you know well, the yeah. history, and you'll this know is nobody something. else will have that bottle. Right. Right. Well, Not only that, uh, uh, you know, and we embossed everything. The biggest thing that we embossed, and we put it flat, straight up on the front of the of the bottle was the DSP number. So you get a DSP number whenever you're a distillery in the United States, mm -hmm. distilled spirits plant. In Kentucky, our numbers were handed out in order and we are DSP KY10. So we are the 10th oldest licensed distillery in the state of Kentucky. That is awesome. Yeah, right. which which is huge. Talking about that, uh, I, I just saw a post uh, the other day, somebody posted a picture of a bottle that they were drinking that was like, uh, I think the bottle itself was 100 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the label, it literally said for medicinal purposes. purposes right. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. And they, yeah. said, they said it was fantastic. Yeah. So, so at the... Uh... Bardstown campus, we have a vintage whiskey library. Yeah. And it's a living library, so everything in there is available to pour. But one of those bottles is from December 8th, 1930. And wow. it on the back has the the prescription where I think it's something like take three teaspoons every hour. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't say what it's for. It just is like, oh, the, you can medicate yourself with this. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is it's for everything. so cool. Yeah, exactly. It's so like, you oh, have my. almost a, a hundred year old bottle at yeah. the, that you can just, just you chill can, in. Yeah. You, can do, you can do special pours uh, at the I, bench. Jasmine, did you put a little that on the side for us? Go and come up there in a couple of weeks. Yeah, come and see me. Come on. Let me know when you're there because yeah. I hope to be there as well. But I, we always I try to be you. there. If, yeah. if we know people are coming, uh, even if they're coming to to Bar our Bardstown campus, I'll try to be there if it's somebody that I know and vice oh, versa. Yeah. Well, so I will we... make sure when we come out there, we give y'all both a heads up. Because, I mean, the Green River and Bardstown are both on, on my high point list to visit while we go out there. Please uh, come see but us. I will make sure before, like long before we come out, we're going to shoot y'all a text. We're like, hey, yeah. hey, like, look, we're planning this. Or are y'all going to be there? Yeah, you know? absolutely. I would say please come see us. And Karen and I give the best tours because we get the wristbands that get you behind the locked doors. What so. uh, what's the best way to? I mean, is it Green River? What's the what's the socials? How how do has everyone to follow? I am ky underscore bourbon girl. Okay, and edit yeah. that in. Yeah, I am uh, jz dot distill on Instagram, but uh, Bardstown Bourbon Co. Is okay, awesome. And Green River Whiskey. Do we have we have one more pour? Oh, uh, the yeah. grand. We banana. do have one more <laughs> pour. Is this, so, is, this, is, this is this what you're actually in town for? I think yeah. that um, <laughs> probably by the time this hits the internet, uh, it'll it'll be time for it to be hitting Louisiana. But as of today, this release is tomorrow. Uh, this is our most uh -huh. recent collaboration. <laughs> um, it's with the Amrut Distillery out of India. Okay. So this is the first time that American whiskey has ever been finished in Indian single malt barrels. It is a blend of five different whiskeys ranging from 8 to 14 years old. Okay. And I just think 
like when we're doing these collaborations, of course we want to let flavor lead the way. But this is such an interesting piece of of whiskey history, I think. Like I'm just so excited that we're doing something brand new for the first time. And, and, and that's the big name in, in yes, Indian. It is. In, Absolutely. In so they were the first whiskey. That is ever yeah. Indian single malt distiller. Um, and I'm a big fan of single whoop. malt. Yeah. So pretty Pretty excited, huh? Pretty excited. So, 110 proof. Ease on in. That sounds smooth, Jess. Thanks, Jess. Uh, my pleasure. And, and yeah, I'm super excited smells. to be able to to share this with you guys. I like my initial nose is it's, maple. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh yeah. That is mapley. So I get a little bit of black tea on it. Now, now, how do you say it? Amrut? Um, Amrut. 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 Okay. Sorry, I'm not no. as educated as you guys. Caramel. Caramel. <laughs> That's true. Caramel. Yeah. It's caramel. <laughs> this is new name. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet caramel. That's your nickname. Whatever. If you say so, princess. <laughs> Man, that smells. You do get, you do get a little hint of that 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 single malt on there. I get, dude. It's 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 Almost maple like, and sweet. Yeah. I get a ton it's of sweet. Very sweet. Well, what I'm searching for is kind of that. Uh, it's that kind of leather tobacco. Is hit. this going to be kind of okay. the same price point as the other collab stuff, like with the uh, like the horseware and stuff? Yes. Okay. We try to keep the collabs consistent. Um, Which is a little bit, I guess it's a little bit more than the Disco series. Yes. Discovery, for those that don't know what Disco is. Uh, for Discover... Do y'all call it Disco you. too? I, no, we absolutely call okay, it Disco. Okay, so I didn't know if that was just like an awesome <laughs> collab. No, 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 that's <laughs> us. Disco and collabs. Discovery for anybody who's not a cool cat like you. That is... That is really good. You get, I think it's, it seems um almost a uh, spice forward. Yeah, spice but it, forward that finish but, is, so but not good. an in your face. No, yeah, no, I, it spice. finishes. There, it, it's not. It's not making a drink higher than its proof. No. What's the proof on this? One ten. Wow. Yeah. So I get, I get some baking spices. I get cardamom. I get nutmeg. Um, What's caramel? Definitely get some nutmeg. <laughs> I get I nutmeg get... for sure. I, I get vanilla for sure. Kind of nutmeg, allspice. Very, um, totally. very fall, like a fall type yeah. of yeah. Yeah. It's it, It's like, it feels like this is a, like a kind of like a late Halloween kind of in between Halloween, Thanksgiving kind of pour. I mean, I know it's kind of weird, right? It's, but like, it's what you're yeah. sipping as you're handing out the candy? Well, sure. It, well, that's what I'm sipping while somebody else is handing out the candy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting inside watching football. <laughs> but... Get, this is you get a little bit of oak. Yeah. Um, not much. Though. I get a not, little. It's not, not much. oak at all. It's a not hint. Uh, I think. I think the thing. The thing that'll scare people is when they hear Amrut in Indian mm -hmm. single malt. They think that it's going to be very malty forward, and it's it, not. It's not. It's not at all. And so I don't get the malt on the flavor on no. the profile at all. I actually I love that 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 leather. I actually love that you said that. This is a thing that haunted me as a bartender is people get so caught up on yes on like what they think it should taste like like oh this cocktail has something cherry in it i hate cherries and it's like <laughs> yeah but it's a combination of flavors so like it's gonna be balanced it's not a, a cherry bomb and I, I feel that same way with whiskey like yes. we say oh it's it's an indian single malt finish people oh i don't drink single malts you're right mm -hmm. this isn't a single malt it's a single malt right. finish. finish people it's gotta realize five it's, different whiskeys uh, it's, it's finished in a single malt right. barrel it's not it's not a single malt right no totally so, uh, on the long finish i almost get this a little finish butter. is fantastic I, do you get a little I... do you get a little butter on that i get a little butter on the back end of this this is really this is i mean it's it's, it's not drying like i yeah. expect no. it to be and i think that maybe that's what you're Oh, no, you, you know I what I mean? Butter, like I taste butter. Yeah, like, yeah. No, not, I could pick that up too. Not like butter out of the tub. I'm talking about like just like yeah. a, like a nice warm butter. Yeah, like, yeah, a gentle melt. Like, like a buttered waffle or something. Yeah, I get the waffle, but the no, butter. absolutely, absolutely. So I think that it's it's this such is probably an, one of my favorites. That this is really uh, uh, such a know, complex and interesting is, pour. This is awesome. It's very complex. Thank you. It's yeah, very complex. It's the uh, 
to Indiana Rise. They rested uh, in the barrels for about 18 months, and then we blended in three Kentucky bourbons. Uh, oh, so when people... That's, that's the spice. Right? Yeah. So when people are like, oh, I don't like a single malt, it's like there's so much more going on here. Like, give it a chance. You got to taste it. You don't get the it. rye flavor, though. Well, I was going to say... Just the spice. When you hear that there's the rye in it, you immediately think heat, and you think pepper. And you don't get any of that. I, totally. When I think rye, I, I think more just baking spices. Okay. Not, so, not so much black peppery, but like I think of uh, kind of like kind of like nutmeggy, like kind of that okay. that profile. Um, I'm, not, I'm not getting a ton of that on this. No, but I'm getting not the, at all. I do get the spice though. Like it's that makes sense. I get the spices up front, and like right before it transitions to the finish, I get a little of that. What you would expect from a single malt finish little slight hint of the tobacco right before it transitions to the finish and then the finish first of all it's long it's very long it's, yeah. it's nice it you doesn't keep getting drink. flavors it doesn't drink absolutely yeah it it yeah cause sometimes you get a finish and you say it's long and it's just kind of that heat staying with yes. you but this one the flavor staying on your on, it, on your it, tongue for awesome a while. mouthfeel and and i don't know i just want to point this out this is me on all five of these we've had five the lowest proof has been a hundred i think so wow 100 proof yeah, has 100 been proof. the lowest i don't know about you guys but i have absolutely no burn none and and to me that's a sign of quality that your flavor is here it is all here Absolutely. and not like, like I can, it, it, it is all in your in your upper palate and it's not like so many times you watch people and i and i've tasted it i know you have as well that we've we've had some stuff and and it burns you all the way down and you don't enjoy the flavors because you're worried about the burn and to me a sign of quality is when your flavor is here mm -hmm. and you're just going man that was some good bourbon that i had i mean to me nothing has approached on the palate 150. nothing yeah mm -hmm. and we've gone from what one we've gone we, from we to 119 high if you're talking like 100, 100 single barrel 110 uh, 112 100, 119 119 i definitely we're definitely over 100 but not anywhere near 117. well you won't put it at yourself going gosh i i just had some really high proof stuff no that you know it's like no i had some really flavorful yes. stuff absolutely i've got yeah. a new word for y'all to use oh I please like, so i one of the things i call i call a palate spike right it's that okay. initial burst of flavor as soon as it it's great not as soon as it hits your mouth but like when you put it and kind of close your mouth kind of take in the oxygen and everything yep. i call that the palate burst yeah and then i call it so i go from a palate burst to a mid palate to a finish okay um so that's my four things is nose palate burst mid palate and finish and that's kind of where where i'm able to identify like what i like and what i don't like there's certain things that I'll say on the palate burst, it's got a ton of flavor, but the mid palate's ethanol. I'm not a fan of, and yeah. the finish is okay, right? Yeah. Certain things. So, like everything we've had today has just checked all the boxes for me, for sure. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Scrum tralescent. Sure. Oh Here's... boy. Here he goes. Define right it. Down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Can you spell that for me? No, Please. he cannot. <laughs> answer it. I'll answer that for you right now. No, he cannot. <laughs> I think he. I still taste this. I do too. Way. As, as a as a I've former teacher, I need you to spell that for me, please. That was a word on. Saturday and use it in a sentence. And use it in a sentence. And backwards. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I think they did use it on a sentence in that episode. He oh was boy. playing Alex. Will Ferrell's playing Alex Trebek. Oh boy. Oh boy. That explains <laughs> a lot. <laughs> So, I, listen, guys, I have, thank you so I much for joining us. Up. Hey, thank you. No, thank you. And thanks for being accommodating when we showed up with bottles that you weren't planning on today. Yeah. We were like, nope, we brought these. We'll be tasting them. I hate when people bring bottles. Can't stand <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Or, like, such an inconvenience. We right? hate to surprise you with things that you may not have had. So. No, it was it was a, a true blessing to have you guys here. Thank you. Uh, when we make it out to Bardstown, we're coming to hang out with you all for sure. Yes, please. Uh, oh, here he goes. Um guys again we've got bardstown and green river in the house uh thank you for tuning in this week we will uh, catch oh, you good how much longer is tales of the cocktail going Ooh, good call Ooh, friday night i, or, I think we leave saturday morning yeah we leave saturday morning we, are you so, you are know you, where they you have a schedule you know where they can catch you at yeah where can they find y'all oh my gosh oh, you got a rouse she's got a rouse she's yeah got... actually tomorrow uh which rouses 
It's the oh, you're gonna make me say put her on spot. Wow, she's at the rouse is on chopatulas. Chop 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 Exactly. Uh, but I'll be and there I'll be at there five, and we'll be. You know what, Miss Teacher? Spell chopatulas. Oh yeah, I English major. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. actually, I I never perform for free. I won't be doing that. Oh. Nice try. Let's go pull a buck out your pocket. <laughs> it's P C H uh, Opatulus. Um, so no, no. So are you going to be with her tomorrow? I will be. I will be, and then we leave uh, Saturday morning for. Uh, we have to Austin, go to Texas. Austin. No, Just for Antonio. reference, it's oh my gosh, Thursday the twenty fifth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> so so check Jazz out tonight <laughs> at Chapa. Check them both out at Chapatula's Rouses. Yeah, which means Eric needs to drop this tonight. Um, Absolutely tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna edit this and. It's going to be great. Let me say, if you are in New Orleans, uh, add us on Instagram, message us. If we're around, we'd love to meet you. We'd yep. love to talk to you, taste you on some things. Look, find us. We're, we're around until Saturday morning. They're awesome, by the way. So, um, that's it, 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 there it, with Phil, you. Phil, you <laughs> got anything else? Just I noticed like, you don't have any, any uh, you don't have Claude here to, to trash on today. That piece of crap plant? No. Calm down. You brought him up. I did because I love Claude. <laughs> it's a it's a Christmas Suck. plant that he got for free, and it's at the front door. And I water him every day. Poinsettia. I love that he has a name. Explains a lot. It does. Yeah. Uh, guys, with that, uh, Bardstown Green River. Uh, check them out on Instagram and socials. Uh, we will catch you next week or before. Who knows? We kind of wing this as we go. <laughs> check y'all next week. Thanks.